السلام علیکم 6 پی ایم دس از ریڈیو پاکستان دا نیوز ریڈ بائی ترنم سلمان دا ہیڈ لائنز فورن آفس اسپوکس پرسن ہیز کنفرم دا مارٹرڈم آف سکس پاکستانیز ان دا ٹیررسٹ اٹیکس آن ٹو ماسکس ایٹ کرائسٹ چرچ نیو زیلینڈ یسٹرڈے A crisis management cell has been set up at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Islamabad, to update people on latest information about Pakistanis living in New Zealand. Pakistan has shot down Indian spy drone for violation of its airspace along the line of control. National Assembly Speaker, in letter to his Malaysian counterpart, seeks legal relief for Pakistani expatriates imprisoned in Malaysia. In occupied Kashmir, APHC chairman has expressed concern over unabated use of repressive measures by India against peaceful civilians and resistance leaders. And the final of Pakistan's Super League will be played between Quetta Gladiators and Peshawar Zalmi in Karachi tomorrow. And now the news in detail. Six Pakistanis were martyred in the terrorist attack on two mosques at Christchurch, New Zealand yesterday. This was confirmed by the Foreign Office spokesperson, Dr. Mohammed Faisal, in a statement on Twitter today. He said New Zealand authorities have announced Suhail Shahid, Sayyid Jahadad Ali, Sayyid Arib Ahmed, Mehboob Haroon, Naim Rashid, and his son Talha Naim as dead. The spokesperson said three other Pakistanis are still missing. Dr. Mohammed Faisal said New Zealand police has circulated 74 names of missing persons as reported by families and diplomatic representatives. They said they have informed that they have 49 dead bodies. In the aftermath of the terrorist attack on two mosques in Christchurch, New Zealand yesterday, a crisis management cell has been established at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Islamabad. The cell will address the developing situation and update on the well-being of and the latest information of Pakistani citizens living in New Zealand. Officers of the ministry will remain available in the crisis management cell around the clock for timely dissemination of information and assistance. In addition, Pakistan's High Commissioner and Deputy High Commissioner in New Zealand will also be available for information and assistance. Foreign Minister Maktoum Shah Mahmood Qureshi says there is Islamophobia in Europe and some malicious elements are entertaining their intentions and influencing internal politics. Talking to media in Multan today, he said that security should be provided to mosques as it was provided to churches, temples and other places of worship. Strongly condemning the terrorism incident in New Zealand, Shah Mahmood Qureshi termed it a global phenomenon and murder of humanity. He assured that the Pakistani government will extend all-out support and cooperation towards the Pakistani families residing in New Zealand. About Kartarpur Corridor project, the minister said that a Pakistani delegation visited Atari border recently to finalize the terms and conditions for opening of border at Kartarpur. It was for the first time after suspension of dialogue process between Pakistan and India that two countries issued a joint statement. New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern vowed to toughen the country's gun laws. Addressing a news conference in Christchurch today, she revealed that the main suspect behind Christchurch's mosque attack had legally brought the five weapons, including two semi-automatic rifles used in the massacre. Ms. Arden said suspect Brenton Tarrant obtained a Category A gun license in November 2017, which allowed him to purchase the weapons used to mow down worshippers in two Christchurch mosques. Australian Prime Minister, Minister Scott Morrison described Mr. Tarrant as an extremist, right-wing, violent terrorist. Meanwhile, the main suspect in the killings of 49 people in the shooting at two mosques in New Zealand yesterday, Brenton Tarrant, has appeared in a court on a single murder charge. Pakistani army troops have shot down an Indian spy 
quadcopter in Rakchikri sector along the line of control. According to a tweet of DGISPR Major General Asif Ghafu today, the quadcopter had violated airspace and entered 150 meters inside Pakistan. Prime Minister's advisor on commerce, Abdur Razak Daud, says the government is introducing reforms to encourage business community for enhancing investment and exports. He was addressing a seminar titled Trade Opportunities in China, Indonesia and the United States, organized by the Ministry of Commerce in Lahore today. The advisor said the government's main objective is to facilitate the business community and provide level paying, playing field to all stakeholders. This is Radio Pakistan. Speaker National Assembly Asad Kaiser has written a letter to his Malaysian counterpart seeking legal relief for Pakistani expatriates imprisoned in Malaysia. In his letter to Chairman House of Representatives of Malaysia, Muhammad Arif Yusuf, the speaker said Pakistani diaspora in Malaysia forms the largest Pakistani expatriates community in Southeast Asia. In occupied Kashmir, the chairman of all parties, Suryat Conference, Sayyid Ali Gilani, has expressed concern over the unabated use of repressive measures by India against peaceful civilians, resistance leaders, and activists in the territory. Sayyid Ali Gilani, in a statement issued in Srinagar, said the Indian authorities are hell bent upon curbing and strangulating the popular aspirations for the right to self determination through nocturnal raids, mass arrests, and invoking the draconian Public Safety Act on the freedom people. However, the APHC chairman said the people's sentiment for freedom has touched the pinnacle and the liberation struggle emerged as invincible against all odds. In occupied Kashmir, unknown gunmen today shot dead a woman police officer at a house in Vehil village in Shupanya district. Meanwhile, 11 people were killed and five injured in a tragic road accident near Kundanala in Ramban district of Jammu region today. Russia says it will respond to new European Union sanctions. The EU imposed travel bans and asset freezes on Russian officials in, in relation to an incident in the Azov Sea last November when the Russian Navy captured 24 Ukrainian sailors and their vessels in the Kerch Strait near Crimea. The EU on Friday added eight more Russians to its sanctions list over a standoff. The foreign ministry said in a statement in Moscow today that the Russian side will not leave this unfriendly action by the European Union unanswered. At least 24 people have died in the southeastern Zimbabwe by a tropical storm. The information ministry said in Harare today that the cyclone idea, which brought flood water and destruction to areas of Mozambique and Malawi, hit Zimbabwe as homes and bridges were swept away, cutting off power and communications. China Mini, which borders Mozambique, has been worst affected with the storm, causing floods as well as destroying crops. Two Turkish soldiers were killed and eight others were wounded in a clash during operations into northern Iraq today. Turkey's defense ministry in a statement said in Istanbul today, six militants, including a woman, were neutralized during the operation. Pakistan's Super League trophy was unveiled at a ceremony at the National Stadium in Karachi today. Captains of both the finalist teams, Sarfraz Ahmed of Quetta Gladiators and Darren Sami of Peshawar Zalmi, lifted the trophy and posed for the media. Later, addressing a news conference, Darren Sami said that PSL is one of the best leagues of the world. He especially mentioned the enthusiasm of the crowd in Pakistan and welcomed the cricket lovers in such a big number. Captain of the Quetta Gladiators, Sarfaraz Ahmed, hoped that next edition of PSL would be played in Pakistan. Meanwhile, the final of the fourth edition of Pakistan Super League will be played between Peshawar Zalmi and Quetta Gladiators in Karachi tomorrow. The match will start at 7 p.m. Pakistan Standard Time. And finally, the weather. Mainly cold and dry weather is expected in most parts of the country during the next 12 hours. However, light rain is expected at a few places in Quetta Division. And that is the end of the news. For more news and analyses, log on to our website, radio.gov.pk, and also watch live video streaming of our bulletins on the link facebook.com slash Radio Pakistan News Official.